Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a video on creating custom fields in Payload CMS and specifically having the custom fields interact with each other to do some interesting things. This simple example that I'm providing here is I've modified my user component to have a field called full name, right? Now there's a bunch of different ways I could update this. I could use hooks and all those other things, but what I'm doing is I have made full name a custom field and it is pulling data from the first name field and the last name field to update itself in real time. If I remove my middle name from here, you can see that the full name field has updated. This is a server component full name field and you'll see that it hasn't updated. This component full name field is using React hooks that are provided by Payload CMS to update the UI in real time. This server component, since it is a server component, it cannot actively update my user interface. So what it does is on save it updates. So you can see now that the full name has been updated, but the server full name has not been updated. But if I save this, the save has been done, but also because the UI has not been refreshed, the server full name still isn't updated. But if we look at the API, we can see that the server full name is updated. And now if I go back, now, because the page was reloaded from the server, the full name has been updated. So, how did I get this far? First of all, thanks for watching. Please make sure you like, subscribe, and share with your friends. So, how I ended up on this journey is I started with the fields overview, and then, where is it? Oh, so, just so you know where I am, I'm in the documentation on fields overview, and then I somehow, it is kind of, oh yeah, here it is, it's building custom components where I ended up at. We ended up here with this code, but what am I really looking for? I'm looking for the, I'm looking for client components. So there's server components and there's client components. The one that does what I want it to do is a, not this server, this text server component, but this text client component. Probably best for me to just kind of walk through what I'm doing here first. So let's go back to my page. Let's see how I have this all set up. So here's my users. And I have my full name field. And this is the path to my component, the custom full name text field client. And then I have my server full name field. And I have the full path pointing to the server client, custom full, na full name text field server long name. Notice I don't have the kind of pound component name on the end because I have a def default export, so I don't need it. The other thing that's really important is that in V2, you actually imported the component and passed it in. Here, you pass in the path to the component. So let's go to my the one that does the real-time update, the custom full name text field client. So if we come in here, um, and I've documented this, and all the source code will also be posted. So I use this use field hook. I mean, from payload CMS, you can see in the docs here, it's this use field hook, I pass in the path, and it gives me the value, and it gives me a function to update the value. This is kind of like the equivalent of the um, use state. So you get your value, and you set your value. This value is for my full name field. The next thing I do is I use this use form fields. Important thing to know about the use form fields, when you change the form, it causes a re-render. So that's the important thing to know. But what I'm doing here with the use form field is I'm specifying the value that I'm looking for, first name. And so it's doing a select and it's going to pull out, it's going to pull out the first name field. So you can see it's the field state, and then off the field state, I'm getting the value. If we let our TypeScript do some help with us, you can see that when I touch this, I can see all of the values or properties, functions, whatever you want to call them, that are available off of the field first name. And we need the value. So this use form fields paren first name is giving me back the first name object and then I'm selecting the value off that object. And this, this should probably change. This is first name field value. Let's update all of them. All right. This is pulling out the value, not the field. So now I have the first name field value, the last name field value. I'm using this use memo to kind of optimize this. This will return the first name and last name concatenated together to give me my full name. It's dependent on 
So this value full name will only change if either the first name field value or the last name field value is updated. And then what I do here is I have my use effect which updates the value of the full name. So if the value, the current full name value doesn't equal the value that was determined by this use memo, then I set the value and setting the value will update the value of my full name field. And then you will see the change in the UI. So that, that's what you're seeing here. When I go down here and let me put my Keith back in, you can see as I'm typing, it is updating the, the full name field, but not, but not updating the full name server field. So as you know, server clients, server components are updated on the server, use client, client components are updated on the client. This server field name will not get updated until the page is re reloaded or re-rendered from the server. The other thing that I saw is some people get confused and they're looking for sibling data to come in here. You do not get sibling data on the client. You get the information for the associated fields using use form fields. There's a use all form fields, and then there's a use field. These are a series of hooks that are listed here under React hooks that allow you to get the data related to the document that you have in the in edit mode in your application. The important things that I mentioned before was about the updating. So you can say here, use fields, use internally with all field components, manages sending and receiving field state from the parent form. This is the use form fields, which is the one I'm using to get the other values. Uh, so this is, there are times that a custom field component needs to have access to data from other fields. You have few options to do so. The use form field hook is a powerful, highly performant way to retrieve form field state as well to retrieve the dispatch methods, which can be helpful for setting other fields. I'm not setting other fields. I'm just getting the data. I pro as I'm looking at this, I probably could have just used use field again here and just passed in the path to my other fields, but I, I wanted to demonstrate other uh, hooks that could be utilized. And so you can kind of dig into this and see some other interesting things that you could do with use form fields. And then there's use all form fields to retrieve more than one. So this will basically get you the list of all of the fields that exist on the current form. A lot, there's a lot of stuff going on here with these hooks. I strongly encourage you if you're writing custom components to bookmark this React hook field, this React hook documentation link and spend a lot of time here so that you a clear understanding of it. This warning is extremely important also for the re-renders. You need to make sure you're using the right hook to minimize the renders or else your screen is gonna just start flickering all over the place. So that covers the basic update using the client. And now let's take a look at the server. So this is the server component. And as I said, you're not gonna see the changes while you're in the middle of editing. You're not gonna see the changes until you re-render this page. Also, you can see you get a completely different set of properties passed in here. For those looking for sibling data, here it is. It gets passed in on the server component, not on the client component. You can then just decompose your sibling data to pull out the values you want. So you can see here, I'm pulling out first name, last name, server full name. I construct a server full name and then only update the value for server full name if the, if the values don't match. And you can see I'm actually making a payload API call to actually update it. The other change is that the server updates are happening immediately. The uh, client update, I can make this change. You can see I removed, let me change my first name to Bill. You can see it updated Bill Saunders here. But if I just exit out of this page and let's go back to my users, leave anyway, you can see the change did not happen. So once again, the server's updating in real time based on a way to, not in real time, the server's updating when the page is saved, as you, as you can see by using this payload API to update it here. I could update any of the other fields in this document because I'm just calling a regular API update. So that was just a short video to kind of show you the differences between a server-based custom component and a client-based custom component and a way to have the component interact with other fields in the form or other fields in the document. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Please make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.